Jared Pullen Frono's photo. Dot com, and this is the user guide for the Canon EOS R7. Now, if you already purchased this, congratulations. We're gonna show you everything about this camera to help you get a good starting point to set it up the way that I personally would set it up, run through what the buttons are, and some of it's gonna be pretty basic. So if you've already owned a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, you may skip from part to part, but if you're entirely new to this, just watch the fundamentals and the basics at the very beginning and work yourself all the way through because you're gonna find out things that you might not have been aware of that might come in handy sometime in the future. But let's start with the outside of the camera. Starting here on the bottom, we've got where the battery goes. Now, I know I said that some of this is basic because it is, but it could be good information anyway. So flip the door open just like this. It's on a spring, so it pops open. Your battery is right here. You've got a white clip. You can move that out of the way. It pops right out. Here is your rechargeable battery. I always recommend having two batteries, especially when you travel, just in case one goes bad. I don't think it will go bad, but it's always nice to have a second battery. I'm a big fan of buying Canon's authentic batteries. I don't like third-party batteries. I, I just don't like them. I stick with spending a little bit more money and getting the authentic official Canon battery. So it can only go in one way. You move that white door out of the way, you put it in, do that, shut it, and you're good to go. Now, where does the memory card go? Over here on the side. I said card, but there's actually memory cards. You have dual slots right here. So one card pops out like this. This is a pro-grade digital 256 gigabyte card. That's a, a little big. You may not need one that is that large, but you put the SD card in like this, press it, it clicks in, shut the door, latch it, and there you have it. Now, what about putting the lens on? This is one of those things that if this is your first camera, you might be a little scared and a little hesitant to change lenses. I know I was when I first got started. I was like, oh my God, and this was shooting film. And I was like, what do I do? I don't wanna make a mistake, but it, it's real simple. So this is the kit lens that some of these cameras come with. You have a release right here to release the lens. I'm gonna press that, turn the lens towards me, and take it off just like this. Now inside of the camera, you can see that the shutter is down. Behind that shutter is the image sensor. We do not want to touch this. We do not want it to get rain or dust or anything in there. So we generally, when we change lenses, we like to hold it down like this. So anything that might go in actually falls out. You don't really want to hold it up like this, especially if it's raining or there's a lot of dust because you don't want to get debris in there. But how do we put the lens on there? Here we have a red line. There we have a red line. We line the red lines up. And in this case, we turn it away until we hear that click. And now that's how your lens goes on. Press the button, take it off, boom. Lens right back on and you're good to go. Another good rule of thumb is that you turn off the camera when you change your lenses. I always turn off the camera. Now, since we're talking about turning the camera off, this switch right here turns the camera from off to on as well as video. So if you wanna shoot video in the video mode, you just switch it to video right there or on is for stills mode and off is obviously for off. Now right here is your mode dial. When you get your camera, it's probably gonna be in green mode. Now the green mode is fully automatic where the camera's gonna make all the decisions for you. It's also not going to unlock all of the different menu options. So the way that you can unlock all of the menu options is you go into any of these other modes like FV, which is basically full auto, but it gives you a little bit of control, a little more control than you would with auto. You've got P for program, TV is your shutter priority, AV is aperture priority. I live in manual because that's how I like to shoot. I control my own settings that way. And as you get better, you're gonna wanna control your own settings as well. B stands for bulb. Then you have these custom uh, settings, C1, C2, C3. Then this other mode that I've honestly never used is for changing some of the styles that you want, maybe shooting in black and white. It gives you, it's like a creative mode. Then we've got scene mode where it's like running man, you know, for sports or landscapes or portraits. It's where the camera has these pre-programmed ways of setting your camera. It's where I started when I was brand new. 
basically, but in this day and age, I personally don't go in there. And then that takes us all the way back to auto, but I'm gonna put it into manual for when we go through the menu system. That's where it lives for me. We've got a lock button, which I never use. I don't lock my settings like this, but if you wanna lock control dials or anything, the lock button, you would depress that to do that. And it would tell you on the back of the camera that you did do that. Uh, this is your record button. It's red, it's record. ISO right here is a custom button where you would press it and then you'd be able to, to access ISO really quick. Moving on to this dial right here, this is gonna control your shutter speed. You just go left, you go right. It's got a nice feeling to it, that's right. It's got nice knipples on it. I really like the feel of it. Moving up here, we've got the MF button. That is a multi-function button. It's like a quick way to get into your menus while you're looking through the camera. And then we have the shutter button. This is how you depress it halfway down, is going to activate your autofocus. And then when you press it all the way, that's when it's going to fully take the picture. It's like a spring loaded thing. You'll feel it. You press it halfway or full way, and that's how you control your taking pictures right there. Now, a lot of these buttons are custom mappable. We'll get to that when we get into the menu system, because what if we don't want this to be ISO? We could make a change. Moving around to the back of the camera, uh, we've got some other ones. We've got the star. We've got this checkerboard. Next to that, we have a sub option for zooming in on your images. That's really what I use these two buttons for, is more in playback to zoom in and out on my images. But I actually custom map these buttons to other things because I don't like what they do when I'm shooting. I wanna custom set them. And what's great is I can custom set them. You have your AF on button. That's for back button autofocus, which I don't recommend doing. You may hear a lot of people say that are Canon shooters that I'm a back button focus shooter. Well, that maybe made sense back in DSLR and film days, but it doesn't make sense today with how good the autofocus is and the fact that you just use your shutter button, hold it halfway down, it's gonna lock onto what it needs to lock onto, and that's all you really need to worry about at that point. We've got a command dial here that spins. It used to be down here for anybody that had any of the other DSLRs, it had the spin wheel in this area, but now you've got a joystick for up, up, down, down, left, right, or a, a D-pad for up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, select, start. Uh, inside of the spin wheel, you have a joystick, which you can move focusing points, you can get around the menu system, you can depress it in, which is going to basically be like a set or an okay button. Uh, we do have a set button right here in the middle of the D-pad. It also has a Q on it, and that's how we're gonna quickly get into a lot of the menu settings just it, the Q menu is super powerful. You just click it and it, it, it gives you most of the things that you need to change quickly up on the screen and you're able to go through that whether you look through the electronic viewfinder or use the LCD screen on the back of the camera. Below here, we've got the playback button. So this is what you would hit to play back your images and you've got the trash can and when you press it, what happens, Steven? Oscar the Grouch comes out. Oscar the Grouch comes out, not animal. I always say that, that's why it's funny. Um, um, anyway, Oscar the Grouch does not come out and it does not take you to Sesame Street, but what it does is allows you to delete your images, which I personally never delete images from my camera when I'm shooting. I just don't. We have so much storage these days that I don't wanna accidentally delete something I don't wanna delete, but honestly, I'm too busy shooting and I don't ever need to clear up space, so I don't go ahead and do that at all. Uh, this is your LCD screen. It flips out and it rotates just like this. You could leave it closed when you are traveling in case you wanna protect it a little bit. Uh, I've never, knock on wood, had an issue where I've broken my screen even if it didn't rotate and stay out, so that's not really that big of a deal. But this is a touch screen, so you can touch it and it's unlike MC Hammer because he couldn't touch it, but you can touch this. This is your electronic viewfinder. It's like a little TV screen that allows you to see the world. Basically, it's a TV screen that takes the image off the sensor, all the data, and allows you to see everything out in the world. Because this isn't an optical viewfinder for anybody who used to shoot film. You would look through the lens, look through the viewfinder, which would go through the lens, you'd see actual light. This is taking the information off the sensor and turning it into an image in front of you. And that's how you look through. I love electronic viewfinders. They are absolutely fantastic. So next to that, we have a proximity sensor. Let me turn the camera on real quick. You can see this is your LCD screen, you know, when I talked about Q button, that was happening. But proximity sensor, right here, watch. My finger goes up to it, 
it turns off the display and it switches to the EVF. Uh, you wanna just make sure that it's not dirty or you don't get any rain on it because that might hinder it, it might cause it to change. If you ever run into an issue where it's like, wait a second, why is it changing? Because you might have debris or water on it. Uh, if you're someone who wears glasses, actually it doesn't even matter if you wear glasses or not, there is a diopter where you wanna get your eyes set, you just change the diopter. You focus on something to make sure that the, the, the camera's in focus and you change the diopter till everything looks nice and sharp. Uh, I need to change it, just about everybody needs to change it whether you use glasses or you don't use glasses. All right, so that, oh, menu button. That's an important one. You've got your menu button right here on the back left of the camera and then we go around to the side. We've got an HDMI port. You flip these rubber things out of the way. HDMI port, you got USB-C, which you could use to charge the camera or transfer files to the computer. I'm a big fan of having a card reader. I don't like transferring files via the camera, but it is good to be able to charge the camera through here uh, while you're using it, or if you just wanna get some extra juice on it when you're traveling, because you may only have the one battery, or you just want more juice for being out in the wild. Uh, we've got the a remote cable right here, remote cord, and an empty spot. It's funny how it's empty right here, but that's where you would get a remote and put it right there. You've got a headphone jack, and up here you have a microphone jack for when you wanna plug in a microphone. Moving over to the bottom of the camera, down here we've got our tripod mount. This is where you're gonna screw your tripod plate or screw this onto a tripod. It's real simple and self-explanatory. It's on basically every camera ever made at this point. Uh, moving around to the front, let me just take the lens off real quick. It's not something I normally would do, but this is Canon's camera, and I'm teaching you. We already talked about this. This is your lens release here. The other button on the front is a custom mappable button that you could set for basically anything, and I'll show you how we set that later. But you can go from autofocus to manual with the switch of the flick of the switch. I don't know why they did this, to be honest with you. I know that not all the lenses have manual to uh, autofocus switches anymore, but this is kind of a useless switch for any brand or any camera. Um, but hey, if you wanna go manual, that's one way you will be able to go manual. Up here is a focus assist lamp, and I'll show you in the menu how to turn that off because that's more distracting if you're trying to photograph someone and all they see is this light coming on. It's just really not something that I would have on. Now, moving on to the very top of the camera, there's two holes here. These holes are so, uh, for microphones, so when you're recording video, you're gonna be able to uh, record audio. Now, this is the hot shoe. In the past, the hot shoe was just for using a flash, right? But this is now a digital hot shoe, so it does more than just control a flash if you put a flash on here. There is no flash built into this camera, so just know that there's no flash built in. Most cameras these days don't have flashes built in. But the digital hot shoe is pretty powerful. You can put a Canon microphone in here that's gonna connect digitally and pass the audio from the microphone through the digital hot shoe into the card, meaning you do not need to use a microphone right here, giving you less cables to plug into the side because it just works with the digital hot shoe. Uh, that's the outside of the camera. That's everything. So now let's move into how I would set this camera up the first time you take it out of the box. Let me jump in here real quick because I wanna show you FroPak 3, our presets in action on this photo taken with the EOS R7. So let's start with Zoolander. Boom, one click, Zoolander looks great. Followed by Winnebago, Prestige Worldwide. Followed by Mount Airy, gives you that nice light and airy look. Mentos looks awesome. Then we've got King Contrast, Gotham, Eckert, Capone, Canadian Tuxedo, Almost Famous, and Fifth Element. But I wanna show you one that's my favorite from Fropack One called Skittles. Watch this, one click, boom. That's how good Skittles looks. So look, if you're new to shooting RAW files, you wanna speed up your RAW workflow or give yourself a great starting point in Lightroom or on your phone, we created 15 custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropack3. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. And if you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or if you wanna save even more and get Skittles from Fropack One, you can get the triple play bundle, which includes Fropack One, Two, and Three, and save even more. Now, let's get back to the video. 
All right, now let's start going through the menu to show you how I would set it up as soon as I get the camera. Now, before I get into that, you can see that I'm plugged into a box. This is called an Atomos. What it allows me to do is record the back of the camera or all of the menus. So normally, you, you're, you're not gonna see this, but I'm doing it so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. Now, with that being said, I have to use these joysticks to go through the menu system or the turn dial to go through everything. You can just touch it on the back of the screen. You could use touch screen or you could use any of these dials or the set OK button to do that. But this is what I do when I first get the camera. We hit menu and we come up to the red number one where we've got image quality. Right now, it's set to JPEG large. As you can see from my shirt, I shoot raw. So I go in here and I change it to raw and I turn JPEG off. That way, I'm always set to raw and I don't forget to do that. Now, for those who don't know what raw is, it is an uncompressed format. It's all the data that you get from the image sensor, something that you can go back to years from now to, I rather have more data than have less. JPEG is compressed, it's gonna be smaller, it's gonna be easier to email, it's gonna be easier uh, to, you could get more storage on a card, but storage is super cheap. I shoot raw. Now, if you're just starting out and you don't know what RAW is or how to edit RAW, well, you can shoot RAW plus JPEG. I recommend always saving those RAW files for the time that you do know how to use them. So that's what I have to say about that. So after that, we go ahead and we hit set. I hit OK, and now you can see it's set to RAW. We've got dual pixel RAW is currently disabled. This is not something I ever use. You have to use a proprietary Canon software to do this. Uh, I never use this, I leave it off. Now you may hear me skip past some things or not give you as much information on all of them. Uh, you could go through the user manual to see exactly what that, se that setting does, but there's settings here that we just skip because we've never used them any time that they've offered them. Still image aspect ratio. The image sensor inside of this camera is 3-2. So you're gonna capture images in the 3-2 aspect ratio. You're gonna use the entire image sensor to gather light, uh, to gather the information. 4-3 is old TV format. 16 by nine is 16 by nine, like movies. And one to one is square. Um, I leave it in 3-2 because I'm not a fan of shooting anything other than what the camera allows you to shoot. Now, a good side note is that that affects your JPEG. If you shoot one-to-one -one in JPEG, you're only gonna get a square. You're never gonna be able to go back and get the rest of the data. But if you shoot raw and you shoot one-to-one, -one, it's gonna go into the computer and it's gonna be cropped, but you'll still have all of that other data that was captured outside. So that's just a, a good thing to keep in mind. Second, we've got exposure compensation is set to zero. ISO speed settings, you can control your ISO in here. This is where you have auto ISO. Uh, it's automatically set to that to begin with. I don't use auto ISO, so I turn that off. I just go in here and I can change my ISO to whatever I want to change it to. As we showed you earlier, there's a button on the top that's for ISO, so there's different ways you can get into it, but I do not use auto ISO. People that are just starting out, it might be a good thing for you to start with, but the sooner you start controlling your camera settings yourself, the better off you're gonna be. You're, you're gonna enjoy photography a little more after that. But when you're just starting out, if you wanna shoot in all auto, I really don't care. Just do whatever makes you happy, but I know that very quickly, you're gonna get tired of auto because you wanna get control of your camera and control of the images that you're making. Next up, we've got ISO speed range. You can set that, hey, I don't want it to go to 100, I'd want it to be 200 to 3200, or you don't want it to go up to, sorry, that says 32,000. If you don't want it to go to 32,000, you can come in here, click on this, and you could say, oh, I only want it to go up to 12,800 because you don't want to push the ISO higher. Since you're in control of it manually, don't worry about that. Personally, I don't worry about that. So click this and I arrow down to okay and I set that. Now, if you're gonna use auto ISO and you don't want it to go past say 6,400 auto because the, the camera's making all the choices for you, you can lock this into 100 to 6,400 or anywhere that you want to lock it into. Minimum shutter speed, uh, I leave this to auto, I don't mess with that at all. Back to the menu, I hit menu again. Next up, we have HDR shooting, HDR uh, PQ. I leave this off. This may be something we might use in the future. There's only a few screens that take advantage of this, like iPhone uh, 13, and I'm assuming future, so it's a 13 Pro, or certain displays that iMacs have, uh, and also certain iPads, but I don't shoot anything in HDR as of now. HDR mode, I leave off. Auto lighting optimizer, another thing that I leave off. Highlight, 
tone priority, another thing I leave off. And anti-flicker shooting is something that you might wanna use at some point. We go in here and we hit Enable, see if we enable it says, if enabled is set, the shutter release time lag becomes longer. Continuous shooting speeds may become slower. So basically what's happening here is if you're shooting in an environment where there's old lights that flicker, a gymnasium for example, where you take a couple of pictures and in one picture it looks like there's a streak of light and in the other there isn't, that's because of the flicker. What happens here when you hit enable and you start taking pictures, it's waiting for the flick or the er, it's gonna be in between. It's Gonna wait and it's gonna take pictures. So it might be a little slower, but it's not something you'll ever notice in terms of shooting speed. It doesn't really slow it down that much. So you would go ahead and turn that on in situations where there's a flickering LED board or lights that are flickering. This will help you make sure that you don't get any of that flick or flack in your images. So for now, we'll leave it off, but it's something that we could custom set for a button on the camera or quickly get there from the Q menu, which I'll show you uh, when we are done going through the setup process. Number three, we've got external speed light control. Don't bother with this. Metering mode, I honestly don't even bother it with metering mode anymore, but in here you've got your evaluative, which takes a reading of the, the, the brightest and the darkest and gives you the average. Then you've got partial metering, spot metering, and then center weighted metering. Like I said, I don't use any of this anymore because we've got the electronic viewfinder, which shows you a perfect, rep almost perfect representation of what your exposure is. So you really don't need this stuff as much as we did when we couldn't uh, tell anything when we were at, when we were shooting in the old days. Moving to number four, we've got white balance. I leave the set to auto white balance. Uh, if you're gonna use flash and you're shooting JPEG or even shooting RAW, you would change this to the different flash setting. So in here you can see there's a bunch of different daylight, shade, cloudy, tungsten, so on and so forth. You could custom set your color balance, which is what we do when we're in the studio. I, when I shoot, I leave it in auto white balance for the most part, unless I'm using flash, and that's just going to select the white balance for you. Now remember, JPEGs are gonna be baked in. So if you shoot and you use daylight or the wrong one and your colors are off, you can still tweak it after the fact, but it's gonna be a little harder to do. When you shoot raw, you could change the white balance without changing any other things in your camera, and it's not gonna hurt any of your image. Custom white balance, in case you wanna set your white balance custom. We've got white balance shift and bracketing. Uh, I leave that exactly where it's set. Color space, sRGB is where I leave it set as well. Picture style is set to auto right now. Now there's a lot of different picture styles you can choose from. You've got standard, portrait, landscape, fine detail. We've got neutral, faithful, monochrome. You can even set your own ones. Now this is where I'll say once again, if you're shooting JPEG, your image, your final image is gonna be affected by your picture style. Your raw file will not have, have these picture styles in the computer when you bring them in there. You could always zero it back out. Now, for example, if we were to shoot monochrome, which is black and white, and we shoot that JPEG, you're gonna have a black and white image. You'll never get the color back. If you're shooting raw and you shoot monochrome, which I personally don't do, but I know some photographers know they're gonna end up editing in black and white, they'll set it to monochrome. But if you're shooting raw, you'll still retain that raw data. You'll have the color information in there, and when you bring it into the computer, it's gonna be black and white. If you hit reset, it's gonna give you that color data back. So anything that you change in here is gonna be baked in when you are shooting JPEG, and when you're shooting raw, it's not going to affect anything. So I generally just leave it on auto and keep on shooting. Uh, clarity, I leave this set right where it's set to. Again, that's affecting your JPEG, and you've got your shooting creative filters, which I have off. Uh, that's That was the creative filters on the top of the camera that we showed you earlier. Not a thing that I mess with at all. Moving on to number five in the shooting menu. We've got lens aberration correction, peripheral illumination correction. I don't like any of these auto things. I turn everything off. Now this is gonna be different depending on what lenses you have. The worst, the, 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 the I almost said crappier, but the less good lenses you have, are gonna have a little bit more heavy-handed uh, changes to them if you leave things on enabled. You'll probably never notice the difference at all, but now would honestly be a good time for me to jump in and say, th this is the kit lens. It's an 18 
to 150. It's an okay lens, it's okay. It's an okay place to start. As you become a better photographer, you're gonna start to realize that better lenses do help you get better results. They help you control the background blur. They give you sharper images, better colors, better contrast, better details. So your aspiration, if you wanna be a photographer, should be to grow into better glass. Glass, 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 glass. Invest in glass because glass will go with you from body to body. Bodies get old, you replace them, but lenses, good lenses generally retain most of their value. So when you go to sell it or trade it in, you're gonna get a lot more back for a better piece of glass than a less expensive piece of glass. So I'm gonna go ahead and disable this right here. We've got uh, distortion correction. I turn that off as well. And digital lens optimize uh, optimizer, I turn this off also. Again, anything that's set to auto, I turn off. Chromatic aberration, disable. Diffraction correction, disable. Are you gonna see much of a difference if you leave this stuff on? You may not, if you're new to this, you may not even notice much of a difference. So those are the changes that I make right there. Uh, we've got long exposure noise reduction. I like this to be off as well. We've got high ISO speed noise reduction. So when you shoot at higher ISOs, you're introducing more grain and noise, and they, uh, Canon has built in noise reduction that's gonna smooth it out, so it's gonna smooth operator. Did you know that was coming, Steven? No, I, that, that's a new one. I've never thrown that one in there before. I don't like noise reduction. It makes things look smoother and less sharp, which means they're gonna look less in focus. I rather see noise, I rather see grain. To me, that's fine. Uh, so I go in here, uh, disable, yeah. Goodbye, we turn you off. Dust delete data, I don't touch that at all either. Let me jump in here and say, would you like me to send you this free guide to capturing motion in low light situations? Well, if so, just look for this orange box over on fronosphoto.com, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I'll send you that guide for free. Moving on to number six, multiple exposure is disabled. This is where if you wanna take multiple exposures on the same frame. So say you take one picture, the film's not advancing in the old days. And you take another picture, it's taking it right over that other image, giving you a multiple exposure. Saying you wanna get a picture of me, uh, a portrait, and then a picture of flowers to go over it, that's how you would do that. It's a good creative mode for you to play with, so you could enable that uh, here. We've got raw burst mode is another proprietary thing that, that Canon has. It's gonna allow you to take a ton of raw files and then allow you to pick JPEGs out of it. I disable this, because uh, you have to use their proprietary, proprietary software, which isn't as good as uh, no, it's just a lot of, it's a pain in the ass to use personally. Next up, focus bracketing. I don't touch this at all either. So drive mode. You don't have to come into the menu to get drive mode because it's actually gonna be in the Q menu, which we're gonna show you later on the back of the screen. But here's how you change your different drive mode. This is for single uh, shooting. When you press the shutter down, even if you hold it down, it's just gonna take one picture every time you press the shutter down. We've got high speed continuous plus. This is the mode that you wanna take advantage of the 15 frames per second. We're gonna go into this mode, it's gonna shoot really fast. I like shooting that for when I'm using sports. Then we've got high speed continuous, which is just a little slower. Low speed continuous, even slower than that. Then you've got your self timer. This is where you can control, do you wanna shoot at 10 seconds? Do you want it to shoot every two seconds and take 10 photos every, it's gonna do two seconds, then take 10 photos? You can do all those different things in here. Oh, that's self timer right here with the remote. Two self timer, two seconds and then you have self timer continuous shooting. That's the one I was just alluding to where you can set the timer and it's gonna keep shooting a bunch of different images. So generally I'm gonna leave it on high speed plus. Uh, internal timer, or sorry, interval timer is set to disabled. This is actually pretty cool. If you wanna take multiple images across a certain amount of time, if you wanna do a time lapse with images, you could do that right here. I'm gonna just leave it disabled for now. We've got bulb timer is currently disabled. Silent shooting function. This camera, being that it's a mirrorless camera, gives you the ability to shoot fully silent. Meaning, when you're not silent, you're using the shutter, it's coming down and it's taking pictures that way and making a little bit of noise, it's not that loud. But if you wanna go into silent shooting, you can go in here and you go to on. And that's gonna allow you to shoot silent. Now, if you're shooting fast moving subjects, like a golfer or someone swinging a baseball, you're usually not swinging a baseball, Jared. You're swinging a baseball bat or someone's pitching a baseball, you're gonna see that ball egg. It's gonna create an egg because the readout speed of the sensor is slower than it would be on a R3, which is a $6,500 camera, or it's a $6,000 camera. So just know that you might get a little bit of distortion when you go into that. But if you need to be completely silent, you come into this mode and shoot in silent. 
shutter modes. We've got electronic fr uh, first curtain. That's what I use. I leave that on all the time. Le uh, release shutter without a card. I turn this off because why would we be wanting to take pictures without a card by accident? I used to do that with film. I did it once. I loaded a roll. I didn't load a roll of film and I sat there and I was taking pictures of hockey players and then realized that I didn't put the film in the camera. So yeah, I go ahead and I leave that off. This is one of the biggest menus in all of the camera, the red menu. There's 10 different menus here. Oh, and also there's a different menu when, there, when it comes to video. So I'll walk you through the video menu when we get to that as well. Moving on to number eight, we've got IS, which is image stabilization mode. We go in here, it is currently on because this camera has image stabilization. It's gonna counteract your movements. Uh, it's, it's a really great feature. So if you're shooting at slower shutter speeds, it's gonna help keep the background nice and sharp. Now, if a subject runs across the screen and you're shooting at a slow shutter speed, uh, sorry, runs across your field of view, image stabilization isn't gonna keep them sharp and stable. It's gonna keep inanimate objects not uh, blurry. It's not gonna make them blurry. So we go ahead and we put that on. Also, a lot of the lenses that Canon makes are gonna have image stabilization built in. Next up, we have digital movie IS. So it's off because it's an extra form of digital image stabilization on top of the regular image stabilization. It's gonna crop in even more. It's gonna crop your image uh, and it's, it's gonna look a little smoother, but it's not something we ever personally use because we have the image stabilization. Next up, we have auto levels. Currently it's disabled. This is something new inside of the R7 that's going to help to, if your levels are off slightly when you're shooting video, it's gonna help get your, it's gonna move the sensor and get it straight. I don't, I don't do that. I like to get my line straight myself. So that's something that I personally turn off. Customize quick controls, edit layout. Oh wow, that popped up. We're not even gonna go through this because I wanna, you could rearrange the custom controls. We're gonna see this when we get back into, when I show you the Q menu uh, at the end or a little later on. Touch shutter is disabled. Do not be one of those people. I repeat, do not be one of those people who uses the screen to touch to take pictures. That is so amateurish, unless you really wanna be an amateur, to do that. The proper, I'm gonna say it right now. The proper way to hold a camera is like this. Your hand is underneath. This is how you do the zooming. You do not want your hand up here. This is not stable. You do not want to hold it out like this and use it like you're shooting a cell phone because you have an electronic viewfinder. The only times I'm okay with you using the, elect uh, the, the LCD screen to take pictures is if you need to hold it above your head to get a different angle or go super low against the ground. That's it. Generally speaking, you want to put your eye through the electronic viewfinder. It's going to be more stable. It's going to give you a cleaner view of everything and you're going to get your line straighter. That's what I have to say about that. Do not use touch screen to, to shoot pictures. It just, it, it makes no sense because it's going to try to focus. Don't do it. Image review. This is something that I personally turn off. I don't want to review every picture that I take. I don't want it. So basically, if I took a picture right now, I would take a picture and the image would pop up in my viewfinder. I'm like, that's a distraction when I'm trying to shoot. So I turn this off. I don't want that all on at all. Next up, it says viewfinder display, which it doesn't give me any more information other than enable and disable. I think that would just mean it's turning off the ability to use your viewfinder. I just leave this set exactly how it's set in the camera. Next up, we've got high speed display because I'm plugged into this Atomos recorder. I don't have an option to go and see that. We've got metering timer set to eight seconds. I don't change that at all anymore. Moving on to number nine. Nine? Display simulation is on. This is what we want. What this means is you're going to see your exact exposure in your electronic viewfinder. So as you change your exposure, you go brighter, you go darker, you raise the ISO, you change the aperture, it's going to give you an exact representation or as close as possible to an exact representation to the proper exposure. I love that. That was such a revolution or a revelation when it happened because with an optical viewfinder, you don't see what your exposure is. You have to rely on your exposure meter. Here, you can now look at your exposure meter, but also see exactly what the image is gonna look like when you take it. There's other options in here, exposure plus depth of field. So it's gonna give you a preview the whole time of what your depth of field. So if you're at one, two, it's gonna show you that. I don't wanna use these modes personally, uh, because I feel that it might affect my autofocus speed or my shooting speed. Uh, so I just leave it to exposure simulation on right there. Optical viewfinder simulation, view assist is currently off. I leave it off. Shooting info display, there's so much you can do in here. Screen info settings, you can turn, see all the different options that are popping up. Say I don't want this one to come up, I could just uncheck it. 
I could just uncheck it. Uh, there's a lot of data on this screen. That's what you're gonna see in your viewfinder. So I don't want those, I turn those off, I hit okay, now they're gonna be off. Uh, there's actually one other thing to show you here. For the first three, you can go ahead and you can hit info uh, or touch the edit screen and you can edit the information that's gonna be on there. So you can go even deeper. It's good to go deeper, it's just, it's more pleasing that you can make changes like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay and turn that off. We've got viewfinder info toggle settings, same thing. You can take more control here of the two and the three. Viewfinder vertical display. Ah, when you rotate vertical, it's gonna change the info, which is great. This is something that we've always wanted with cameras and Canon has finally given it to us. Next up, we have grid display. So if you want this grid to show up, you wanna play checkers inside of your viewfinder, you can, get the, you can get all of these grids inside of your viewfinder. I don't like grids. I don't like grid lines. Some people like them to try and keep their lines straight. I just leave them off personally. Histogram display is set to brightness. Uh, so you got brightness or RGB. I've never used RGB histogram. I barely use the histogram for brightness also. Display size is large or small. So that's for the histogram display. Nothing major here. You play with that and decide which one you like the most. Lens info display. So we've got focus dis, yeah. I'd leave this exactly how it's set. Some of these, it may seem like I'm skipping past some of this stuff, but some of it's just stuff I never use and I've never used and I'll probably never use. If you really wanna dive in a little deeper, you could always, of course, go into the manual that they included or that there's a PDF manual on the website to learn a little bit more. But I'm trying to give you the cliff notes, the, the easiest way to set this stuff up quickly to get out there and start shooting. Reverse display is on. I was trying to get more information about this earlier, it still didn't make any sense to me what it was, so I just leave it on. Viewfinder display format. Yep, display one or display two. For people that wear glasses, this will shrink it down. He wears, he can't see without his glasses, Steven. It's good, right? It's a good joke. Anybody old enough to know my girl. This is, display two is more for people that wear glasses. I leave it on display one because I want to have the largest uh, viewfinder uh, option right there. Display performance. Power savings or smooth. I like to go to uh, Santana here mode, smooth. So I would go ahead and go into smooth mode and do that. That's gonna give you a cleaner looking viewfinder, less herky jerky. And finally, number 10, movie record. It's interesting that they give us the movie record options here as well without going into the movie mode, but this is where you would change your movie record options. So you click here, 4K UHD, we go to 4K, your different formats, different options. We'll touch on this a little more when we get into video mode as well. But sound recording is set to auto. You could sh change that to manual as well if you're gonna wanna control your own. Just like we had earlier for ISO speed, you can custom set your ISO speed for video. You can do auto slow shutter, auto level is currently disabled, and the shutter bu uh, button function for movies. You can change what this is, a half press for metering, and then press all the way for servo for focus. You can change all of these different settings, and that, finally, is getting through the shooting menu. Next up, we have the AF menu. Uh, I believe that's magenta. You call this magenta or purple? Actually, it's, it is magenta, because the, the other one, the, the one with the Wi-Fi symbol is purple, so this is magenta. So AF operation, right now it's set to one shot. One shot means that every time you go to take a picture, it's going to, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna show you. Here we go. Let me just tap this, change my ISO. I'm hitting this button because I want it to be brighter to see what we're doing. You hear it? You hear how it's beeping and you see how those green boxes show up? And that, that's every time, See, it's locked in. You see how the focus isn't changing? That's because it's locked in. So, ooh, look at that, and then IAF comes on. So that's for single shot. Now we go in here, and we go into servo. This is for continuous focus. So it's gonna continuous focus as, no matter what I do here. You see how those boxes are always moving? It's trying to focus on something everywhere, every time. So generally speaking, you're going to be in continuous focus for just about everything these days, which is servo, because the cameras are so good today that even if you're shooting inanimate objects, it's still gonna focus on it uh, where it needs to be. AF area, so this is good. This is a thing to remember. Whole area AF is exactly what you just saw. The camera is going to try and find the focus everywhere, right? No matter what, you have no control over your boxes. One, two, three, flexible zone areas. Uh, expanded area AF is good if you're gonna shoot sports. I like to shoot expanded AF area, this one. So I, it's not called this one, it's just the one that I like to use. But what you see that, I have this box, 
and I use the joystick and I could, you know, move it around if I want to. I just like using this one uh, and then it finds my eye. Not my nose, not my nose. Look at this, now it's finding cheeks, but that's because it's not looking at me direct. There we go, IAF right there. So this is the one that I like to use, uh, but going back in, you have one point AF and you've got spot AF. If you really wanna get pinpoint on a certain spot, you can go ahead and move that stuff around. But I like to be on either expanded area or expanded area all around. If you want the camera to do everything, and I mean everything for autofocus, you'll put it on this whole area AF, kind of like whole milk, but I don't, I don't use that. Next up, we've got subject tracking is on. Why would we want to turn? The tracking frame is not displayed. Now, I want that on. I always want my tracking display on. Subject detection, this is important. If you're photographing people, put it on people. Animals, use animals. Vehicles, use vehicles, none. I don't know why you would use this. I would never turn off that. Subject tracking is important. So for people, for sports, we're using this. For animals and birds, we're using that. Uh, it actually does work. Eye detection, the best thing in the world ever, is enabled. I would not disable eye detection. This is one of the most powerful functions in mirrorless cameras, in the history of mirrorless cameras ever. Leave that enabled. Uh, switched from tracking subjects, this is gonna be switched to the subject here. It's gonna be like, oh, we can actually hit info here to read more. Set how ease, yes, thank you, Canon. Set how ease the tracking to switch to a other sub. Wow, you guys really need to figure out how to translate this into English, because this is terrible. Uh, other subjects from the existing subject. So switch tracking subjects, you've got initial priority here. I, I set this on one and I just leave it right there. Moving over to number two. This is uh, your, ca your cases. So number one case, you have pictures here. Versatile, multi-purpose setting. Two, you've got your tennis players, continuous to track subjects, ignoring possible obstacles. Three, instantly focus on subjects, suddenly entering AF frame. You're gonna have to toy around with these uh, to see which one is best for you. Uh, number Case number four is for subjects that accelerate or decelerate quickly. And then you've got auto if you wanna just let the camera do it. All of these modes are very good, but depending on what you're shooting, if you're like shooting tennis and we don't want any distractions, you go to the one that has the tennis player. It's pretty self-explanatory right there. But Canon gives you so many different custom settings here that it's, it's, it's super duper powerful. Let me jump in here and say, are you looking to pick up some new Canon RF lenses for your brand new Canon EOS R7? If so, just look for this link on the screen or the link down below because you can go over to Canon's website to learn more about those lenses or pick them up if you'd like. Number three, one shot AF release priority. I leave this exactly where they have it set. Preview AF, I turn this off. I don't want that on. I don't want any issues with my autofocus happening. So I leave that disabled. Next up, we have lens drive when AF impossible. I leave this default on. Um, AF assist beam firing, nope, we don't want to fire lasers. So I go ahead and I disabled this altogether. I, I don't want this on. I really don't want this uh, to be a distraction. It is a distraction to people, so I don't use that at all. We've got number four here, touch and drag AF settings. This is off. I don't really, this was a, a great feature when IAF wasn't as good, but what this does allow you to do is use the back of your LCD screen to help move your focusing points quicker, but you have a joystick for this. Uh, you really don't need it anymore, so I leave that off. Limited area AFs, this is so you can change. If I didn't want to have one, two, or three custom, I would go ahead and turn those off and I wouldn't need them at all. So I would leave that off. I don't, how do I change here? How do I, oh, there we go. I arrow over and I hit okay. Uh, sensitivity AF point selection. And this is your joystick speed. Might as well max it out. It's better to move them quicker if you, if you wanna move them, so we move them quicker. Orientation linked AF point. Either way you do this is gonna be fine. Same for both, I, I leave it on same for, for both vertical and horizontal, um, but you could set separate AF points, area point. As you rotate, it would move the focusing point. I just leave it to where it is because it's just what I'm trained to do. You could play with these other ones and see if that works for you as well. Moving on to number five in magenta, we've got manual focus peaking settings. I currently have that off. You've got focus guide as well as movie servo AF is enabled. Movie servo AF means that you're gonna do continuous focus when you're in uh, movie mode for autofocus. Now, I do wanna show you focus guide for anybody that will be shooting manual. You have to turn this on, and then when you go into manual, this is what shows up. And so it's a focus guide that actually, it's actually really good. Look at that. Do you know what's happening here? I just line this up, line this up, line it, line it up. There it is. Green means go. 
and it's just, you know, I'm moving right now, so it's not gonna be exactly perfect, but then you get out of it, going back into auto, and you're back into your continuous auto focus. So that mode's actually pretty cool. That's something I would turn on if you're going to be doing manual uh, shooting, which I haven't shot manual in years at this point. Uh, number six, we've got electronic full-time manual focus. I leave this off lens electronic manual focus. It's off just like this, I leave it. Next up, we've got focus control ring. Currently it's set to focus. So either the control ring or the focus is, this is the focus ring right here on the end. I can control that. That's gonna control your manual focus. But again, I don't shoot manual very often. Focus ring rotation, plus minus. So plus to the left, minus to the right. I leave that the way it is. RF lens, MF focus ring sensitivity. So this will change depending on uh, do you want it to be varies with rotation speed or linked rotation to a degree which is more similar to how we used to shoot. But all of these functions for manual, I just don't understand why they're all in here, but they're here and that's what they are. Moving on to blue, playback menu. There's not a lot that I do here in the playback menu, so we're gonna skip a bunch of things here. Uh, I don't protect images, erase images. I don't rotate my stills here. I don't, I don't change any of this stuff. I really don't do a lot of editing or changing in the actual camera. I'm focused on shooting and not doing it. Print order, nope. Photo book setup, nope. Uh, raw image processing. So if you wanted to take a raw file and then convert it to a JPEG, you could do it here or you do it in the computer, which is the way that I do it. I don't do any of these other settings here under three. Under four, no cropping for me. I don't convert Heath to JPEG. Heath is a newer format. Uh, I don't ever shoot in Heath currently, so I don't touch that. Slideshow, nope. Set image search conditions, nope. None of this, none of this. Next, we've got magnification, which does have something that I do. So when I'm gonna magnify an image that I took, I like to go into actual size. Uh, that gives me a good look when it zooms in to see, did I nail the focus where I wanted it to nail? Uh, magnifying position, it's going to magnify to where the focus point was. So if it focused on the eye, that's where it's gonna zoom in. So if that focus was at the top of the frame, it's gonna zoom in there, not just in the middle. Back in the old days, when you zoomed in, it would just zoom in on the middle automatically. Well. We've gotten smarter, we no longer do that. Maintain position, let's see. Use your specific magnified position when browsing images. So that means if you zoom into one, it's gonna stay in the exact same spot when you go from image to image to image. Uh, I actually don't do that because I don't want it to be there. I want it to go back to where the focusing point was. So we'll go back out here. Image jump just means that when you're reviewing your images and you turn this top dial, it's going to jump 10 images at a time. It's a way that you can more quickly get through images. And number six, we've got playback information display is something that I go in and I toggle. Like, I don't need this, and I don't need this, and I don't need this, and I don't need that. Like, I don't need most of these things. Really, I really don't need most of these things at all. So I have just the information that I need. That's really what I want what I really, really want. And you can actually control some of this by hitting info as well. So I go through and I turn those off. That means when I'm toggling through the images, I'm not gonna, uh, and toggling through the info display, I'm not gonna have 8 million info displays of information that I don't actually want. Highlight alert, disabled. That's just gonna show you the blinkies on the screen if something's overexposed. AF point display is disabled. I actually like when that's on. You like when that's on, Steven? Yeah. Yeah, I like to see where the AF points are on. Playback grid off. You kind of don't want that in the way. You don't really need to see that, so that's off. Movie play count, uh, record time. I don't even know what that means. Ah, yes, I want record time, not time code. And HDMI, HDR output is currently off as well. Next, we've got purple, more like a light purple, more like mm, light grape. It's not Barney purple either. But this is the Wi-Fi and connectivity setting menu. I'm not gonna walk through how to do this. The tutorials are kind of built into the Canon Connect app as well as into the camera that walk you through how to connect your camera to your phone. It's real easy to do and it's, actually pretty cool that I could be sitting in this chair controlling the camera that we're recording on now, which is the Canon EOS R5. I could control everything about it. I can touch the focus. I could have it find my eye. I could shoot photos. I could shoot video. It's really great that you could do that. You will do all of that right from this menu, but I'm not going to walk you through that because it's pretty self-explanatory when you get there. Now we're going to move on to the wrench menu, which is yellow. And there's six of these to go through. There's quite a bit of information that we're going to change here. Now record function plus card folder set. They put a lot of stuff under here. You can record photo and video to separate or same. Correct, Steven? 
Yeah, you could do same or separate, but what I like to change here is record options. Right now for photos, which it's showing you a stills camera, I always do record to multiple. So what that means is that I put two cards, two SD cards in the camera, and I record raw files to both. I like having the option for redundancy. This means that if something happens to one card, God forbid, not that it's happened, knock on wood, well, it has actually happened once in a, in a Sony when I was in London shooting in the studio and lost all the video, but still had all the photos, which was good. Um, because I had a redundant card. So I go ahead and I hit record to multiple. That's important. Now record options for video, you can record to multiple as well. That would be a smart thing to do. This just means playback from card one or playback from card one, and that's the folder set. I don't change these two right here. If I wanna play back from one card or the other, I usually just pop one out and just say, you know, show me what's on this card if I'm not sure which is the playback menu. So those are the settings that I go ahead and do right there. File numbering, I do continuous. That means if I take 100 photos today and I take the card out and I put a new card in, it's gonna start at 101 the next time. Uh, you don't, I don't like it resetting every single time back to zero. So uh, file name, you can go in here and change it from 6L4A to something else, whatever you want it to be. It could be image underscore, uh, and then it just, I usually go in here and I custom set it to FRO or just JP or JPA, JPB. What basically what's happening is the file name will be this for 10,000 photos. And then when you go back over 10,000, it's gonna set, it's gonna start back over again, the new number. Uh, change So you could change it right here and it gives you an example down below of what it's gonna look like after you make those changes. So it's not very hard to do. Uh, format card, I'm not gonna do that right now, but I'll go in here and show you, I'm still not gonna do it. So it says no card in cam, in, in slot, yeah, no card in, no card two in the camera. But if I hit format right now, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna hit it. Oh, do we wanna do it, Steven? No. No, because I have soccer photos on here that I've already offloaded, but you can see that it says how many gigs I've used, how many gigs are left, cancel or hit okay. I'm not gonna hit okay, because I don't wanna format the card. But when you get a new card, or after you're done a photo shoot, and you've saved the images to your computer, and you've backed them up somewhere else, and you're positive that they're backed up and secure, before every photo shoot, I go ahead and I do reformat my card so that it's free of any uh, data and we're ready to go. So I'm just gonna hit back here. Auto rotate, this is important. So we've got auto rotate, right now it's set to on for the camera and on for the computer. That means that a vertical image is gonna show up vertical when you're in horizontal display, meaning it's gonna be much smaller on the screen. I like when it shows up entire screen vertical, so I go ahead and turn that on on computer so I just want auto rotate on for computer, but not for camera. So that way I can turn my camera vertically and see the full image. That's what I like to personally do. Next, we've got uh, add camera rotation info for video. This is what we call the TikTok setting because uh, this will allow the camera to write in. So if you're gonna shoot vertical TikTok style, it's gonna tell the, it's gonna leave a note in the file. So when you put it in the computer, it's gonna come in in that orientation of vertical video. It's a thing. If you're old and you think vertical video isn't a thing, it's a thing. It's gonna be here forever. It's, it's a thing. So get over it. Uh, date time, this is where you're gonna set your date and time as well. Number two under wrench, we've got language. Uh, Self-explanatory, whatever language you want it to be in, you can change it in. But if you change it, you better memorize where things are. Should we change it for the rest of this, Steven? No. No, we, we shouldn't. But there's a lot of, ah, Polski. We went to Poland once, Steven and I, before going to Photokina. Uh, video system, NTSC, we leave that. Help text size, small, you can make it larger. And mode guide is currently enabled. I actually turn this, I don't use mode, I don't use the mode guide, but if you're a beginner, you might wanna leave that on. Three, beep is currently enabled. Earlier in the video, you heard when I would press the shutter halfway down and I was in single shot or one shot, you would hear that beep to let me know that it was in focus. Next up, we've got volume. So I, I'm assuming if you're gonna shoot in electronic shutter, this is gonna give you the electronic shutter sound. You can make it louder if you want. Focus beep could be louder if you want. Touch sounds, that's for if you're gonna do touch settings on the back. It can do a beep. Right now it's off. I don't need a beep every time I do that. Ooh, self timer volume. So if you're gonna set the camera up a long ways away, it's gonna beep. It's gonna be like beep, 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 beep. 
Ooh, did you like that? No, that was like the perfect noise, Steven. That was the perfect shutter noise. Beep when, what does that even say? Beep per, what is that icon? Oh, that's self timer taken for video. So I guess it beeps when it does that. So you could control that as well. I just, that's a hard icon to know what that even means, but we figured it out. Uh, headphone volume, self-explanatory, power savings. Right now we've maxed everything out for power saving so that it doesn't turn off on me and ruin our recording. But if you wanna have it power auto power off after five minutes, you can do that. So all of those settings are in there. Number four, we've got screen viewfinder display. This is for auto switching. I leave it on auto switching just because that's the best way to do it. Let the camera make its, uh, make a choice for you. Screen brightness is set to four, which is right in the middle. I don't want it too bright and I don't want it too dark because that might throw off my representation of my exposure when I look at it, even though that's just for the screen brightness. The more important one is viewfinder brightness. I do now set this to auto. I used to leave it on, on manual and I'd make it brighter or darker for my taste, but the problem was it wasn't representative representative of the actual exposure. So my exposures were slightly off. So I leave this in auto and I'm pretty close with my exposure, meaning the electronic viewfinder, the image that you're seeing there is going to be very, very close to the proper exposure. So that's why I leave that on auto and let it auto adjust for me. Screen viewfinder color tone is kind of something new. I haven't really seen this in too many cameras, but I leave this on too. I think that is the right one to be on, at least for what I've been shooting. Fine tuning VR color tone, I don't go into there. UI magnification, this is if you have trouble seeing, you can enlarge it, and HDMI resolution is set to auto. Let me jump in here and say, are you tired of your friends and family telling you that your photos are fire emoji or thumbs up emojis, and you really want some real deal feedback from a professional professional photographer, well, I have two different mentorship options to do just that. Head on over to fronosphoto.com slash mentorship, because over there you can see examples of a 15 minute rapid fire critique that's recorded, or a 45 minute one-on-one -on -one live mentorship Zoom call with me. So both of those options are there to help you become a better photographer. Five, we've got touch control is set to standard. You've got sensitive and disabled. I'm, I'm sensitive, you know, I'm a very sensitive soul, so I might cry easily, so I might set the camera to sensitive just because of my tears. No, I'll leave it on standard. Multi-function lock, that's this button up here that we talked about earlier, which is the lock button. You can show what it's gonna lock. In this case, it's gonna lock the quick control dial, the multi-controllers, it's not gonna lock touching, but it's gonna lock control ring. So you can make all these changes and tell it what to lock. I personally don't lock anything. Have you ever locked anything, Steven? No. No, Steven hasn't either. Switch, ah, the AF manual switch. You can enable it or disable it. You might as well leave it enabled. There's no reason not to, um, so yeah. Shutter at shutdown. So this means that when I take this lens off, well actually we have video of it, when I took the lens off the camera, you saw that the shutter was down. That means every time you turn the camera off, the shutter's gonna come down to protect, and I put protect in parentheses because it's not really gonna protect anything if you actually touch it, but it's gonna cover up the image sensor. I actually kind of turn this off because when I change lenses, it's sometimes not as quick as me turning the camera off, taking the lens off, then the, 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 the sensor is still exposed in that time, and then I put a lens back on. So instead of waiting, either way you're gonna be fine. I don't get that much dust on my sensors, especially when I'm shooting wider open at 2.8 or 1.4 or 1.2. If you're gonna be shooting at f11 or 22, that's when you start to see more of the dust and the dirt that might be on there. So uh, shutter on shutdown, that's for you to decide. Do you want it to be open or do you want it to close when you shut it down? Sensor cleaning, you go in here if you want to have the camera, do, you know, shake it off, shake it off. I stay up too late, got nothing on my plate. That's what people say. Eh, eh. Taylor Swift. Anyway, let's, let me go in here a little deeper. Um, so you can do auto cleaning at power off, which it's not, or it's set to, well, you could set it to auto. Okay, it actually is set by default. When you turn the camera off, it's going to shake the sensor and clean it. That's another thing that's gonna slow you down. I don't need that on every single time to shake anything off. You could do clean now, and it would do it when you want it, or you could set it to clean manually. You could do it when you turn the camera on, turn the camera off, lots of options. I don't really go ahead and change that. I, I don't. I do change it. I don't want it on every single time. It doesn't need to clean every single time. Choose USB connection app. Wow, wow, that's a lot of stuff. 
Um, I've actually never done anything with this because I never connect this to the USB to go to my computer. I personally use a card reader every chance I can get. Now six, we can reset the camera. We can custom shooting mode for C1, two, and three. That's at the top of the camera. If you want, say, say you were shooting indoors and you wanted to set indoor settings to C1, you would set it here. And then when you say something changes in your outside real fast and you want it to go to there to have it set for outside, you can set that to C2. It's actually, I mean, it's good if that's what you're gonna do. I personally don't set this. I know Steven sets it more when he's shooting video so he can have custom video settings for high speed, uh, or slow-mo or whatever he wants to, to have. You've got battery info. If you have an authentic Canon battery here, it's gonna, it has a sensor in it that's going to, or chip in it that's gonna tell you how many percentage battery is left and shutter count and recharge performance. So we've got 74% left at this point. Battery's gonna last a pretty long time. I still recommend have at least two. Copyright information. So I could go in here and I could enter Jared Poland, Frono's photo and enter copyright details, copyright Jared Poland, Frono's photo. I do recommend you put your name in here because, or your business, because it's gonna write that information to your files in the metadata so that it's there when you bring it into the computer. Next, we've got manual slash software URL. If you wanna get the manual or software, you just go ahead and QR code this and it's gonna launch that for you. Certification logo, and then we've got firmware. We're on firmware 1.0.1, so your camera may or may not be updated to the latest firmware. Just check out Canon's website to see which version firmware is there, and if you do need to change it, uh, it's real easy to update, and they'll walk you right through that. Next up, we have the orange menu, which is what I call the custom function menu, because that's where that is stored. Exposure level increments, I leave this at a third. ISO speeds, we leave that at a third. I don't change any of this now that I look at it, Nope, don't change any of this. Safety shift is something they do in football, but we're not doing that here. The second card in orange, we've got same exposure for new aperture. That's pretty interesting. If you're gonna use auto modes and you go from like 2.8 and then you get a lens that's F8, it's gonna make all the changes for you. I, I don't like that. I'm not gonna do this, so I just leave that off. Next up, we've got AE lock metering mode and after AF focus. I don't use auto exposure lock personally, so I don't even go in here and change anything. Set shutter speed range. I don't set shutter speed range. I want to have op all my options uh, and set aperture range. I don't. I want to have all of my settings available for me at all times. Uh, direction for uh, shutter speed, sorry, TV and AV. TV is shutter priority and AV is aperture priority, so shutter speed and aperture. I leave this exactly how it is for plus and minus, down to the left for less exposure. Uh, direction set, leave that same. Next is switch slash these controls when shooting. I leave that on off, but where you do need to learn a little bit is customize buttons. This is where we can control and customize all of the buttons I talked about on the top of the camera, the front of the camera. For example, you can see on the left, we've got custom settings for photos. On the right would be the custom settings for video. So if we wanted to change the shutter button for some odd reason, you could change that. But if we didn't want ISO to be set to the ISO button, we could change that. But the one that I wanted to change, well, I changed these two, these on the back. So let's see, I could change this back one to, yes, one shot to servo. This button right here, the star button, I just changed to one shot to servo. So where would this come in handy? Where would I wanna go from continuous autofocus to single shot autofocus? If there was a subject that wasn't moving or I was having trouble getting the focus to lock on, then I would hit this, move the focusing point to where I want to and shoot old school style. But that's a way that you can do it quickly and that's awesome that you have that function right there. But you can see that all of these other buttons can be changed right here. So it's real easy. You go through and you just select what you want it to be changed to, whether it's photo or whether it's video. Continuing on, we've got custom dials. I don't change these, but if you really wanted to change, well, this is where you can change the control ring if you had an RF lens that uh, had a control ring. You could come in here and change it. I personally turn off the control ring. Does this have off in here as well? It does. So I go to off. Usually I have Steven set up this for me, so that's why I wasn't sure that there was off. Steven's back here on the camera. But yeah, no, I turn that off because I actually don't like the control ring to do anything. Next up, we've got clear customized settings, which we're not gonna do because we just set them. Number four, add copyright. Uh oh, that says cropping. It doesn't say copyright. I don't want cropping information because I don't crop. Audio compression is set to on. Default erase option, it makes you hit erase once and then it says, are you sure you want to throw this in Oscar the Grouch's can and you hit it again. Release shutter without lens is off. So you can't release the shutter with 
out a lens, good. Retract lens on power off. That's if you have a powered, a powered lens, so you would go ahead and leave that to on. And five, clear all custom function settings, which we're not gonna do because we just set them. And the last is the green, the star menu. This is where you can add things that you wanna get to quickly. This used to mean a lot more, when we couldn't have custom settings for buttons or the Q menu, because everything that we really need to get to is easily accessible with a click from a button or on the outside. But there is something we could add here. Um, select item to register. I wanna find, what do I wanna find? I wanna find, well, not drive mode. We, ooh, silent mode. Silent shutter function, function, that's a good one to have. We could put that in there. And then you just can keep adding. Usually I put uh, battery information here because I want to quickly get to the battery. And I'll go in here and I just, oh, I was watching, you know it's going to be the last one. You know it's going to be the very last, oh my God. Did I pass it? No, I didn't pass it. Come on. Uh, come on, battery information. Format card, I like to put format card in there. So I like to put it in there just so I can get to it quickly. And then, nope, no beep volume. I don't even use the beep anymore. Oh boy, there's the battery. Then I put battery information in there and now that is registered. So I can just hit menu to go back at this point. So all of that stuff will be registered right here so you can get there quickly. And that is running through the menu, yes, running. And by running, I mean, this was a marathon to get through these settings as they pertain to still images. Next, I wanna quickly go into the video menu just to show you some of the things that changed. So I've already switched into video mode here on the top dial and I hit menu, which brings up a different type of red menu because you don't see 10 different folders to go into. This is where you would go to change your movie record size. So this is where you have FHD and you can scroll through here to get your 4K standard, uh, or you can get your 4K standard IPB or your 4K fine, which is a great place to shoot. This is where you have your uh, 60 frames, your 30 frames and your 24 frames. And obviously if it's grayed out, that means you can't select those that option. So that's where you're gonna go to make those settings. Next we have high frame rate is currently set to off. This is if you wanna do 120 frames per second, you would go in here and turn this on. And, and a quick note again, back on the movie size, the 4K fine, that is the oversampled one. That's gonna give you the best video quality possible, the best recording possible. Uh, so that's where we like to shoot in the fine mode. Digital zoom is disabled. We leave that disabled. Sound recording right now is set to auto. You could change that to, you can, you can manually set this if you want to. If you want to turn it off, you can turn it off, but you have those different options. If you know what you're doing, you want to control your audio. If you're running and gunning, you most likely want to leave it on auto for running and gunning. Number two, same exposure comp, ISO speed settings. This is all similar than uh, with, with, the, with the photo mode, but you can change it independently here. HDR shooting is off, auto lighting optimizer off, highlight tone priority is off. Next, we've got AV one eighth of a stop increments. That means for aperture, you can get one eighth stop increments, not 1.4, 1.2. Eight, you know, so on and so forth. They're gonna be one eighth stops in between. Let me jump in here real quick and say that this video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you're looking to build your very own online portfolio, use what I've been using for more than a decade now, 10 years, for my personal website of jaredpoland.com, and that's Squarespace. I use it because it's simple, easy, affordable, and I don't need to know coding, and I guarantee you, you can have your website up in under 30 minutes with a gallery or two to share with the world. So, if you wanna get your 14-day free trial, head on over to squarespace.com slash photo. If you decide that it's for you, use the code photo at checkout to get 10% off your first order. Now, let's get back to the video. White balance, 
Remember with video, you're locking your white balance in. So you wanna make sure that the white balance that you get is the correct one, because if you're in the wrong one, it's gonna be hard to get your color right after the fact. Uh, set your custom white balance here. You've got white balance correction. This is for people that wanna get even more fine tuned. You can go in here and fine tune things. Picture style, you wanna make sure your picture style is right here, that it's not over sharpened or over clarity or monochrome when you want color. Because if you burn in monochrome, it's gonna be burnt in and you're not gonna get your color data. Canon log settings, this is if you wanna shoot Canon log, you would go in here and set that, but that's gonna give you a very flat image and you're gonna have to make all the color corrections or a lot of them after the fact in post-production. That gives you a lot of control, but we don't shoot in that personally for how quickly we turn videos around. Clarity, I wouldn't go heavy handed here and shooting created filters are also off, but you do have them for video as well. Lens aberration correction, I turn all of this off anyway. Chromatic, I turn all of it off. I know it's going to affect the image. Uh, it's not really going to play a major part. I, I leave that off. High ISO speed noise reduction, again, I'm going to turn it off altogether. I don't want that on anywhere in my camera. Next up, we've got time-lapse movie is currently disabled. We've got movie self timer, which is like taking a still, except it's gonna start taking the video in two seconds or 10 seconds. Remote control is disabled, but this is where you would go to enable it when you do plug in a remote control. Image stabilization mode is currently on because the camera has IS, so image stabilization. And if you want more, you can get a digital IS, which is going to be even more stable. That's if you're on a super shaky environment. I don't know where you would honestly use it, but just know that it's gonna crop in on your video a little bit if you turn digital IS on. So if you're just running, yeah, if you're running with someone, that may be a good time to use it. Auto level is currently disabled. This is the option where it will correct for your straightness or not straightness as you tilt your camera. It's going to help compensate for that to keep your line straight. I personally don't use this. Steven, do you like this? Steven says sometimes because maybe he needs a little bit of help, but sometimes it just doesn't work the way that he wants it to work because maybe you want your lines to be a certain way. Now, when I say correcting, it's only like three degrees, so it's not gonna correct very much. Uh, custom quick controls, this is where you would go ahead and set all of these. You can edit layout right here, um, but yeah. This is, this is the Q menu, so you can make those changes, add things to the Q menu, or take things out. I will show you the Q menu after we're done this. Uh, shutter button function for movies. So do you want it to record? Do you want it to meter? Do you want it to autofocus? Uh, or do you want it to do nothing? Uh, but we could also have it to start movie recording, which is what I would prefer it to do. But we do have a record button, so it's already built in. I don't know why you wouldn't just use the built-in record button. Meter timing, eight seconds. Zebra settings uh, are currently off. If you're someone who likes to use zebras, you can go ahead and turn them on right here. And they give you a lot of different options for zebra settings. Now, this is for anybody who doesn't know what they are, it's gonna help you with your exposure. You're gonna see a bunch of lines. The closer they get, the further they get. It's gonna tell you whether you're overexposed or underexposed. So uh, the more professional, Photo or video shooters are going to use zebras to help them out. Shooting info display, just like with video, uh, sorry, just like with photos, same options. You can go through, turn them on, turn them off. We don't need to go into that again. And number seven, reverse display. Uh, this is the same as we had before. Yep, same as we had before. And then you've got AF. So this is autofocus as it pertains to video. Uh, that's why it says movie servo AF is enabled. This is for using continuous focus. You can select different areas just like we did with stills. Subject tracking is on, big fan of this. Subject tracking, to be able to track Johnny or Jimmy or Jennifer or Johansson or Johannesburg running down the field or whatever they're playing, that's awesome. So you can control for people, animals, vehicles, and none as well. Um, eye detection, tracking eye for video is awesome. Yeah, it is really good that you could do that. I was gonna look to see if I could do it for Steven, but I'm not gonna do that. Switching tracked subjects. You can go in here, this is gonna be the sensitivity. You could pump it up if you want it to go quicker, uh, or if you want it to go slower, you can do initial priority where it's gonna stay longer on that main subject. Next up, we've got Movie Servo AF Speed. Now, it's already set to pretty fast. Uh, this is for tracking your subjects. How fast do you want it to, to move? Uh, you could max it out if you want. And yeah, we just click on this. 
make it go faster. Faster, if that's what you want. So when active, it's always on. And yep, that's how we set it for there. Movie servo, servo AF tracking sensitivity. Let me hit the help button info. Adjust the responsiveness of movie servo AF according to the creative look of your movie and preferred focus transition speed when the subject moves from AF points. So yeah, this is going to control, do you want it to be locked on or do you want it to be more responsive with the tracking? Number three, lens drive when AF is impossible. That means it's gonna to continue to try and focus the whole time. So it's just gonna keep trying to autofocus even if it can't find your subject. Touch and drag AF settings, same thing. You could, as we talked about with stills, you could set the camera to allow you to track using the back touch screen. Next, we've got limit AF areas, same as before. And we've got sensitivity, for AF point selection, right now it's set to plus one, uh, which is actually where we set it earlier. Next, we've got five manual focus speed. This is the same as what we set, and six. These are all gonna be the same as well to how we set it earlier. And just jumping through these real fast, I'm gonna hit the info button to jump through. These are the, these are the same. Your record cut, uh, settings, these are the same as we did with stills, same as we did with the custom, and same that we have with our star green menu, which is our quick menu or my menu. It's all the same there. So now that we've gone through the menus, let me show you what you're gonna see when you put your eye up to the viewfinder or use the LCD screen to see what modes are selected. Now, I'm keeping this cap off. I'm just gonna show you. This is with it open, but I keep it off to make it easier to show you everything around the screen. And generally, you'll be able to touch the screen when we make some changes, like when we go into the Q menu. Again, I can't do that because I'm plugged into this recorder, but I wanna go through and show you what everything is on the screen right here, starting in the top left where it says M. M means manual. So we are in manual mode, which means I control the shutter speed, aperture, and ISO independently. So now that I mentioned those, let's go down to the very bottom of the screen near the left. We can see where it says one one hundredth of a second with an orange dial. As I turn this dial right here, this is gonna control the shutter speed. As I go to the right, it's gonna go higher to give me a faster shutter speed. As I move it to the left, it's gonna go slower, giving me lower, giving me a slower shutter speed. Now to the right of that, there's an orange icon that looks like an orange with lines on it, it's not actually an orange, that is the spinny wheel. So as I spin the spinny wheel, you are seeing that the aperture is changing. Right now it's at 3.5, and then I can dial it up to f22 with this lens. Next to that, we have the our exposure meter, which really came into play more in the old days, but it still comes into play. I still look at my exposure meter to make sure that I'm pretty close, but remember that your exposure, I'm, I'm taking this off for a second, I wanna show you. Right now, we can see that it's underexposed, right? it's dark. As I dial open my aperture, it's letting more light in. So as I go slower with a shutter speed, you see how much brighter it's getting? That's because it's overexposed. It's letting in a lot of light. So you can see how the exposure, let's look at the meter, is pretty close, right? Right about there is it saying this would be the proper exposure at 1 60th of a second at F3.5 at 5,000 ISO. So that's just showing you that the cause and effect that you can just look at the image and get it pretty darn close and it's going to be near the proper exposure. So we're down here on the bottom right hand side now where it says ISO. There it says 5,000. Now if I wanna change that, we have this button right here that says ISO on it. I can tap this while we're shooting and now either touch the screen to slide it or just rotate this here. I believe I can rotate the back dial as well. So I can rotate this dial as well to change the ISO and you just hit the center or you just go back. Now it's set to 800 and there we have it. So. That's the bottom. That's how you change your aperture, your shutter speed, your ISO when we're in manual. And here's another way that you can change a lot of settings quickly. We hit the multi-function button. I tap that and you can see that it's set to ISO right now and I just turned the dial. You can see that the top dial is that, that orange semicircle. That's telling you that it's this spinny wheel up here on the front to do that. And the bottom wheel, the one on the left, is that orange looking one. Now I'm switching through like, oh, I'm in high speed plus 
or I want to change to servo or single. We could do that right here. There it is, one shot or servo. So you can see how you can make all those changes with the multi-function button. So there's a lot of ways that you don't even need to go in to the camera anymore because there's so many buttons and options just to quickly make those changes. All right, so we got that out of the way. In the middle of the screen right now, we see my box. Yep, this box right here in the middle, and I'm moving it using the joystick. So I can move it with the joystick. I could move it if I had the touch sensitive screen set so you could control it that way. If I, let's say it's all the way over here in the left and I wanna get it back in the middle. I can literally press right here in the middle of this joystick and it's gonna get it back in the center. I'm very big on getting my line straight and one way I do that is to make sure that I'm lined up back in the center. Let me cut in here and say, are you looking to buy a new camera or new lenses or trade in something that you already own for something else? Well, you can check out allenscamera.com. They're a mom and pop store that has been around for over 40 years and it's where I go to purchase most of my gear. So head on over to allenscamera.com slash fro and let them know that the fro sent you. Now that we got that there, back up to the top left where we have manual. Underneath we have autofocus and it shows the focusing mode box that is up on the screen right now. That's what it's showing. It's saying that we have the tracking on and the IAF as well. It's kind of confusing the way that it looks, but that is what it is. Below there is servo so that we know we're in continuous focus. Um, did I set, I did change that button. That should work. If I hit this star button back here, that should change. There it goes, it changes right to one shot. So now we're in one shot. I wanna get back to servo. I hit this custom button again that I set and we're back into servo. So you can see how that changed on the screen as well. You can see below there, it says raw and card one. Because I only have one card in the camera, it's showing that I am writing raw to one card. If I had two cards in the camera, it would show that I would have raw and raw. So it would be raw to one, raw to two, if that's how we had it set. That's personally how I do keep it set. Below there, we've got the high frames plus for, for your uh, high speed shooting. So that's H plus. And below there is what metering mode you have set. This is the evaluative metering mode. Now, back to the bottom right where we have ISO, we saw that is 500. Right above there, you have Wi-Fi, which is currently off. That's why it's grayed out. And then you can see we're at 18 millimeters. It's actually pretty cool that as I zoom, the millimeters change. So as you're looking through, you can see what millimeters you are set to. To the right of that, it says exposure simulation is currently on. That's exposure sim. That's how you could see as I change the aperture and the ISO and shutter speed, the exposure changed in your viewfinder. The whole thing changed, brighter or darker. That's super important to have on. Above that, you can see that we have people tracking on. That's why the person is there. If we had the, the animal one, then obviously it would be animal AF. It is good that if you are gonna be photographing people, you do make sure you shoot with people, not with animals. Right above there, we have creative styles, which are currently off, followed by your picture style is set to auto. We talked a lot about that already, followed by auto white balance. And above auto white balance, it says flicker and off. So right now the flicker detection is is currently off, it would say on, obviously, if you had it on, and then you've got the histogram right next to it in that box. See, you see how the histogram is changing, right? That's what it does. And now I'll put this back on the lens cap. To the left of the histogram, we've got a hand waving to us with a plus. That means your IS is on in the body and you have a lens on that includes IS. So you're getting the, the IS plus basically, it's more stabilization. It's the lens and the sensor working in combination to give you more stability. We've got the battery indicator right next to it. So it's showing you that I'm down a little bit. I'm at about 65% right now. I, I just took a look in the, in the menu a few minutes ago. Then there's, you'll see 300, sorry, 3,996 in parentheses and 36 next to it. What that means is that I have 3,996 more photos space for those raw photos on my memory card. And 36 is how many shots I have left in the buffer. So if you're gonna shoot at 15 frames a second, you're gonna get a little over two seconds of shooting before you outrun the buffer when you're shooting raw. So now let's take the lens cap off and shoot a couple pictures, because there's a couple things I wanna show you. Uh, let's see, I want my aperture to be open a little bit here. Uh, I wanna take some pictures, here we go. Boom, see, you see the number changing? The buffer's at 14, 
Now the buffer is gonna, it, it says at 15, it's gonna keep counting as it's writing to the card, 17, and it's gonna speed up. That's how many pictures I have left in the buffer before I outrun the camera. That was a lot of pictures to shoot, right? At 15 frames a second, that's not bad. And you can see the focus is continuing. I mean, if you need to shoot that long, the action has already happened. So you can see, oh, there's zero left and it, it was still shooting, but yeah, it's filling back up quick, pretty quick. And that's it, really. You zoom in, right? He's too dark, Jared, you're too dark. There, it's finding my eye, perfect. It's probably because it's on a silhouette, uh, sorry, on, a, on, a, on an angle, it's not gonna find my eye. Steven, lean in, please. There's Steven, same thing. That's his eye. And if I use the joystick, it's gonna switch eye to eye. Um, and we come back to here and like, oh, hey, IAF, IAF. And then you like take pictures and it tracks the eye. That's it. It's pretty simple right there, but I thought that would be cool to give you a quick look of how that works. Now, if I run through the info button, if I hit info, you see how the screen is changing? You have more info, you have less info, you can control all of that inside of the camera. I don't like shooting with a ton of info on the screen, but it's not a bad idea to make sure every once in a while to look over and be like, oh, I am in RAW, I wanna be in RAW, and make sure you're in RAW. One of the things I turn off the histogram, I don't like shooting with a histogram on, so I make sure that I keep that one off. So we already showed you the multi-function button as a quick way to make changes. There's another one with this Q button. If I go ahead and hit the Q button, we now see all of these options. So starting up here at the top, you could touch the screen now, right? You can touch it, I have to arrow through. So if I wanted to change to spot or one point or expanded area AF, I would just scroll over. Oh, and if you remember, I turned off the option for the custom one, two, and three, so I can no longer select those, it just skips those. We scroll down, this is how we go from one shot to servo, but I put a quicker button on the back of the camera, which is much quicker to get to. We can change our raw settings here, which I'm not gonna go ahead and do. We can change, do we want drive mode, do we want single shooting, high speed continuous plus, high speed, self-explanatory, same thing with your metering mode here, it's high lit in orange. Keep going, this will just take us back. Flicker on and off, this is great to get to quickly if we're like, oh yeah, we want flicker on, we go ahead and do that. Scroll down for your auto white balance, picture style, creative filters, and your subject detect. If you wanted to quickly change from people to animals to spot detection for vehicles or off, this is where you would do it. It's really self-explanatory and easy. It's awesome that these cameras do all of this, that you don't have to dive deep into menus anymore. Once you really set your camera to the way that you like it, all of this stuff is within one click at this point, either with the multi-function button or the Q button, or you custom mapped a button. So that's a walkthrough of what you will see on your screen. So now we're gonna look at the info that we see on the screen when we are in video mode. So you can see all of these different options. The same things applies as with photos in terms of if you hit the MFN, you can quickly get to different options. If you hit the Q button, you can see all of these different options that you have to run through. We've got AF area, we've got which memory card we're gonna save to, the movie size uh, that we have selected, digital zoom is currently off, your volume is set to eight, then it's actually set pretty well. It's not peaking too bad, so that looks pretty good. You can control that from there. Your go back button, your IS mode, auto white balance, picture style, creative filters, as well as subject detect. You have all of these options right here. So when we look at the top left, we have manual with a video camera. That means manual video that we're shooting. Next to that, to the right, it says six hours of record time in the current mode that we're set in. If we were to change that mode to say 4K 60, the time would start to go down a little bit because you get less record time when you do that. Right below, or actually to the right of that, we've got of course, the battery indicator once again. Below that is your image stabilization mode that you have on, followed by the focus mode that you have selected. And we just talked about this, your memory card, the mode that we're shooting in, the digital is off, your headphone volume, you have your left and right monitor for, for your audio. We've got servo AF is on on the bottom left hand of the screen with a green dot. We've got the timer is off. And again, like we had with photos, you've got your one 125th of a second, 
You can change your shutter speed there. You can change your aperture right next to it. And you also have your ISO, which is currently set to auto, which is not terrible when you're shooting video and you're running and gunning. So if you're gonna set it to auto and you wanna set parameters to say, don't go to 32,000 ISO, you could set those parameters. Uh, but let me show you what happens when you record. I'll take the lens cap off. We're not recording yet, but I'm gonna hit the record button. Boom. You could see that the info leaves the screen, most of it, and we are recording video. There's my face. I'm in focus. There, found my eye. That's cool, so it's gonna track me. Oh, and that box that just came up, let's see if I can get that box to come back on. No, there it is. It, has an, it sometimes has an arrow next to it. That's when you hit it, it's gonna switch eyes to focus on. Steven, give me your face. There, there's Steven's face. See, up, stay in here, stay in here, stay and stay, stay. You see that arrow that shows up? I'm just hitting the joystick left and right because that's showing me that I can pick which eye I want to focus on. Thank you, Steven. And that's Steven that we're recording on right there. So you can see that we're recording now and the exposure's right. The auto ISO is set to 12,800. You can see that that's changing. And in the top right hand corner, the red record is on. We also have the one minute. We've been recording for over a minute. And this has unlimited record time. Is that correct, Steven? Well, six hours with we have left on the card or when you run out of juice with your battery. Lens cap going back on to stop the recording. We go ahead and hit stop recording and now we are done. You can see we still have roughly six hours left to record uh, of record time and that's that's running through the, the info that you're gonna see when you're shooting video. So now let's see what happens when we hit the playback button which is down here uh, to the left of Oscar the Grouch, you hit that and it pops up the images for you to look at. Now, you do not need to look at the LCD screen if you don't want to. You can put your eye up to the electronic viewfinder, which is what I personally do, because it just looks so much better when I'm looking at the electronic viewfinder. People may think you're weird because you're like, you're looking, but you're not actually shooting pictures. You're reviewing images. That's what I like to do, is I like to look through the camera. And I should probably say that when you're shooting stills, we talked about earlier, looking through the electronic viewfinder. You could do the same thing when you're recording video. It's more stable, you put your eye up to the viewfinder and you can shoot video that way without having to use the LCD screen. So here's the image. If I hit info, it's gonna toggle the info on the screen. We can see it was at 132 thousandth of a second at 2.8, ISO 400, and it was shot raw. And so if I, if I hit it again, it brings up this info display with the histogram, and I hit it again, and it gives me a clean look with where the focus was focusing, which doesn't look like it was actually on his face, even though I think it was in focus. If I go ahead and zoom in, it should be fine. I zoom in, so I hit the checkerboard back here, and right now on the screen, it's showing me a magnifying glass. It means if I turn this front dial here, it's gonna zoom in. Look at that, it's, it's in focus. And if I wanna move around, I can use the joystick. If I hit the center button, it's gonna pop back out. If I hit the center button in, does it pop back in? Ooh, it pops back in. It pops automatically without even setting that all the way back in. You can also use the screen to pinch and zoom like you do on your phone. So that's how we get back to cycle through images. We can either skip by turning this dial like we sh showed earlier to skip 10 images at a time, or we can rotate one at a time using this dial, which we use for aperture, and you can see we're rotating through the images. And we could put the info back on the screen. I could trash something if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. Look, I hit trash can. Do I want to erase image? Maybe, no. So I hit cancel because I don't want to do that. I hit the center button and that's it. That's going through these images. Uh, you could actually go the other way too and make the checkerboard smaller. And that's basically it. Oh, do you see how the image, this is a horizontal image. Sorry, this is a horizontal image. And as I, ooh, that guy got laid out. Look at this. He was like running, 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 boom. He got smashed. And the guy's like, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hit you, buddy. Okay, let me find a vertical. There's a vertical. Do you see how it's not rotating? Because I wanna use the full screen. So all I do is I 
turn the camera vertical, and I look at it full screen. That's what it does. If we had rotate on on camera, it would rotate it so that it would only take up the center portion of the screen with the vertical, but it's much smaller, and I prefer to have the full screen width to look at my image. Now, it's going to be vertical on the computer because we set it that way. Back in the olden days, it actually, every image came in horizontal, and we had to manually rotate them, which was a pain in the butt at the time. So that's how you go through your images and don't delete them, but that's how you go through them and zoom in and move around and see what you got. Woo! That's a long video, but I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it gave you a better understanding of how to set up your Canon EOS R7 so that you're not upset if something doesn't work right because maybe it wasn't set right. So I know it's a long video, but use this as something to go back to over time. If you need more information, you could use the table of contents down below to jump, jump around to different sections. But the reason I make these is because I want you to take better pictures. The reason this is free is because I don't wanna sell this to you. I want you to learn how to use your camera so that you come back time and time again and enjoy photography and buy new lenses and learn more stuff and watch more of my videos and hit the subscribe button so that you see a lot of the new videos when they go live. And also understand, I've got thousands of videos in the past that you can check out that are free so you can learn from those. So again, thank you very much for watching this video. Any questions, leave them down below in the comments. Uh, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And that's where I'm going to leave it. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.